Now, our third and final expert on the line who is on Skype at the moment, Dr. John Nielsen Wright, Senior Lecturer of International Relations at Cambridge University and Senior Fellow for Northeast Asia at the Chatham House. Dr. Nielsen Wright, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Now, South Korea, from the beginning, had strongly stressed that Japan's trade restrictions against uh, Seoul are unjust and groundless, while Japan is arguing, ar arguing otherwise, based on the free and open international trade norms. What's your take on this argument? Well, I think one thing that's really striking about this dispute is the extent to which both Japan and South Korea are inevitably going to be losers of the escalation of this trade tension. Um, the decision by Japan to um, remove South Korea from its whitelist is being presented by the Japanese government as based on national security considerations. I don't think the evidence really suggests that that's the, the principal reason. And Tokyo, I think, as many critics have pointed out, has been slow to really provide any concrete empirical evidence to support that claim. What we're seeing is much more emotion in the bilateral relationship. This is unusual. But uh, as I'm sure your viewers um, recognize, there is, I think, a sense of frustration in Tokyo at uh, earlier decisions that have affected the bilateral relationship, not least the Supreme Court decision to um, require Japanese companies to provide compensation because of the longstanding issue of um, Korean slave labor during the colonial period. Um, from Japan's perspective, this is seen as a violation of past binding agreements between the two governments, not least the 1965 normalization agreement. So you have a Japanese government that is um, looking at this through the legal lens, but is reacting in a way that is actually a departure from traditional norms in a context where states, not just Japan, but the United States are using trade pressure as a means of resolving diplomatic issues. And that's very unfortunate. Right. Speaking of the U.S., many uh, are voicing concerns that worsening Seoul-Tokyo trade tensions will negatively affect the South Korea-U.S.-Japan trilateral security ties and the bilateral military agreement between South Korea and Japan. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I think these two issues should be kept clearly separate. Gisomia is, of course, hugely important. Um, it took time and considerable effort to both sides to agree to this in the first instance at a time when, of course, both Japan and South Korea are grappling with the question of a nuclear North Korea. Um, they need to be able to share intelligence. Japan provides, of course, valuable satellite um, intelligence that can be shared with South Korea in understanding what is happening in the North. And I think it would really be counterproductive for the South Korean government at this point to cancel GSONIA. But I understand the sentiments are very high. Uh, there is a sense in which South Korea feels it needs to demonstrate its concern. But this would be the wrong instrument, in my judgment. Um, and, of course, you know, as we saw not so long ago with the intrusion into South Korean airspace by Chinese and Russian aircraft, um, other countries will try and exploit the tension between these two American allies as a means of enhancing their own security posture. So this is probably the worst thing to do at this stage. Right. As you mentioned before, these tensions help no one, both South Korea and Japan will be negatively affected. In your view, how should South Korea and Japan narrow their gaps and find a breakthrough? Well, in all of this, if you look at history, of course, it's been the senior partner of the United States um, that has sometimes stepped in behind the scenes to try and bring the two sides closer together. We saw that, of course, very importantly back in 1965, when then uh, US Ambassador to Japan, Edwin Reichow, was a critical player in building a consensus between the South Korean and Japanese governments. And that's happened often in the past. Unfortunately, the Trump administration has shown no real appetite to play that sort of role. Um, it is itself, of course, practicing its own form of pressure politics through the use of trade, um, trade sanctions as means of enhancing its own national interests. And therefore, we can't rely on the United States. This leaves us in a very difficult position. How can Japan and South Korea work together? My worry at the moment is that if you look at popular opinion, both in South Korea and Japan, um, that is driving this um, growing gap between the two countries. There's a danger that it will escalate. We've seen boycotts of Japanese goods in South Korea. What I would recommend is, as a matter of urgency, that both the Japanese and South Korean governments set up their own joint working group to at least attempt to create space in which dialogue can take place between the two countries. Well, uh, we all 
certainly hope that there will be a quick resolution to this uh, escalating tensions. Mr. Nils Nilsson Wright, thank you for your time today. Pleasure.